Well, I mean, there's nothing more exciting than having Spider-Man join the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We got a taste of that last year in Captain America Civil War. I think in many ways he stole the movie, and now we get to see his first standalone feature in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and that's something that, uh, that we geek out about very hard. You know, when, when, uh, when Stan Lee and, and uh, Steve Ditko created Spider-Man over 50 years ago, what was so brilliant about it, what was so unique about it, was here we had this universe full of heroes, and suddenly they added to it this kid who had to be home, had a curfew, had to do his homework, had to take care of his aunt. He wasn't living on another planet or living in an ivory tower. He was just a kid, like most of us are or were. Uh, and he had relatable issues. He had these unbelievable powers. He had great responsibility. Uh, but he had everyday issues. And all of the great Marvel characters have flaws, have quirks, have something that makes them relatable. None have something as relatable as Peter Parker does. Well, we were excited. You know, the Vulture, I think, is the second villain Spidey ever faced in the comics, never been in a film before. And what was exciting to us about it is we had this whole idea of what would it be like to actually live in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've made 15 movies now set within this same shared continuity of universe, and now that we've introduced Spider-Man to it, we can introduce some of his villains. And what is it like to grow up in that world? What is it like to be in a world where you can look over your head and Iron Man flies by? Or aliens pour out of the city and the Avengers come and attack them? Um, it would be scary, it would be exciting. Certainly for Peter, he got to spend some time with the Avengers. We saw him in Civil War, had a pretty amazing summer vacation. Now he has to go back to high school after hanging out with, with these rock stars. What's that like? That's his journey. The journey is different for, for Adrian Toomes, the vulture. He is just a normal guy. He's a regular guy, he lives in this world, and suddenly all these unbelievable things are happening, and he starts to feel small. So he starts to gather and scavenge all of this amazing technology that is left behind after these superhero battles, and he builds this unbelievable wingsuit, and he starts a business of his own. And it's fun to see somebody that didn't just have, you know, some sort of uh, some sort of medical accident that led to uh, that led to superpowers. We get to see him literally with his own two hands build his future and build his destiny, which is very much what he believes in. And Michael Keaton joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe is also one of those, it was on the bucket list. He's an amazing persona, he's an amazing actor, and getting to see him sort of look and scowl at these, uh, at these heroes that he thinks are somewhat ridiculous, at these names that they're calling themselves, and he decides if you can't beat them, join them, and he becomes this villain on his own. So at every turn in this movie, you see new aspects of Spider-Man that have never been in a film before, but have been in the comics for years. Uh, he's got mechanical web shooters, as we saw in Civil War. He has to have web fluid. If he runs out, he falls off a building. So you get some added tension there. You get his scientific smarts as he tries to figure out ways out of that scenario. It's the first full Spider-Man film that takes place in high school. Uh, and he's got other high school friends. And for the very first time, somebody learns a secret. And he's got a best friend who's, he's not sure he can keep his mouth shut, but his friend Ned has learned his secret early on in the film, and suddenly you have an entirely new dynamic for Spider-Man, as he needs to not only navigate the homework, helping his aunt, doing what he thinks he needs to do to impress Tony Stark, he thinks he should be an Avenger, and now his best friend Ned knows his secret, and is Ned going to be able to keep a lid on it, or is Ned going to be an ally, is he going to help him?